Hi, Jared with VisibleTour.com and just a quick video. Um, I ordered the Canon R7 um, May 26. So May 26, almost, well actually, one day shy of a month ago. So I pre-ordered it and it was released a couple days ago. And B&H has not, from my understanding, I've talked to him a couple times, fulfilled any of their orders of this camera. And so I was thinking, well, who has it around here? And to my surprise, uh, my local camera place, Camera Corner Connecting Point here in Green Bay, actually had one. And so today I just picked this up uh, a couple hours ago. Haven't opened it up, haven't looked at it. Uh, it is the R7. It does come with the kit lens, the 18 to 150, I believe it is. Um, it isn't weather sealed. I have no desire to actually use this lens because I have a 15 to 35 RF and I also have the 24 to 70 RF uh, L series weather sealed, great lenses. And so I'll be using those and I will end up just selling this 18 to 150. Um, for less than the $500 that it costs because it came as a kit and I'm not losing a whole lot by doing that and I will sell it pretty quickly. So I just got this. Um, I can't wait to do video on it and honestly I kind of want to just set it at 60 frames per second 4k and have a fresh battery and let it go and see how long it goes if it goes all the way to the end. Also I don't want to do it in an air conditioning place like my house. I kind of want to bring it into my garage or not necessarily outside because if it rains or anything, but uh, my garage gets hot pretty quickly and I just want to see if it overheats and that's going to be my test with it as well because supposedly this thing does not overheat and that was honestly the number one reason why I bought it along with not having uh, any time limit whatsoever. Um, 4K 60 is interesting, but really I want to shoot the 24 frames per second or the 30 frames per second um, on this. I also purchased it. I guess I'll tell you why I purchased it. It's a B camera to my R6. My R6 does overheat once in a while for what I use it, architectural photography, video. Um, it doesn't overheat often um, because my video is probably 10, 15 minutes at a time but it does get close, especially in the summer, and this hopefully does not. <laughs> that, is the, that was the point of getting the R7. So I am excited here. I'm just gonna unbox it real quick here. And so again, I got this at Camera Corner Connecting Point uh, here in Green Bay. Very, very happy that they actually had it. So here's the uh, warranty stuff. Um, Canon imagery, EOS R7. Um, maybe I should read it for once. I mean, I've in the last few years I've bought a EOS R, an R6, and now the R7, and I don't think I've ever read any of the um, manuals. Uh, another charger, which is great. Now I've got two of these. Uh, uses the exact same. Uh, battery as the R6 and the USR, and that is fantastic because I can swap those around. Um, strap, never use these, it'll probably stay in this, and then when I resell this one day, I will have this for the next person. So, um, here is the, yep, the lens, and Kind of give you my first impressions. It's weird looking. Um, so this is the, I'm pretty sure it is, 18 to 150, 18 to 150, only good on the um, RFS, so uh, crop sensor. So you can put this on the R6 and what it would do is it would just go down to um, crop into a 1.6 crop. Um, but obviously, what would be the point of doing that? You would rather just use the full sensor um, of the 32 megapixels of the R7 on this if you're gonna do that. By the way, another reason why I wanted a crop sensor in APS-C in the RF 
is that if I wanted to get um, a RF version of this um, 32 megapixels and cropped in that much, I would actually have to get 50 megapixel camera, which right now there is no Canon 50 megapixel uh, mirrorless camera if I wanted to crop into a 1.6 and get that 32 megapixel still. So that's the nice thing about this APS-C is now my 24 to um, 70 has become about a 36, 37 millimeter to a 111 millimeter, still a 2.8. Um, it crops in obviously, so it doesn't change the millimeters. So any kind of distortion or view that you would get at say 24 is still there when it's cropped in to look like it's 35. So it's still there, but now I get extra reach. So if I'm at events like my kids events, anything like that, I now, go beyond that 70, I go to the 111 of the zoom in and um, that'll be good. So I am looking forward to that. It's a different look um, and I think for video it'll be great. So that being said, this is not weather sealed. Um, I'm, I find it interesting. It is interesting. Um, doesn't have clicks. Oh, I guess that doesn't, oh there, there's the zoom. This would be maybe the focus or whatever you can use it. It isn't the traditional um, L lens RF where you have like the clicks at and you can program, maybe you can program it, I don't know. Um, I'm actually not even gonna take these off because I'm gonna sell it as is, brand new, never used. And that will offset the price of buying the whole kit. So, um, to, the main event, I guess you would call it, is the, here's the R7. So here it is. Let's see, is it gonna focus on it? Just so you know that I'm not like one of those guys that pretend I bought an R7 and I'm like, here's my images. These are my images from the R7, but there's no proof that I actually own an R7. Here it is. Um, so it's, the grip reminds me of the EOS R, which I really liked. It's, it's deep, it's thin. Um, you could tell that it is not as wide as my R6, which is filming me right now. Um, it is not as, um, well, let's see here. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Um, slightly lower, I would say the top section where the um, uh, the hot shoe is, is a little bit lower than say the R5 and the R6. So everything is a little bit more compact, which is nice. It'll be interesting to have a lens on here. Whoa, let's do it, let's do it. Let's put a lens on here. All right. So these are just kind of first impressions, unboxing, uh, no test here. Um, Feels good. I definitely feel it with my knuckle gripping right here. And I would say it is not super comfortable in the sense that my knuckle does scrape against here um, on the RF lens. So I bet if you did have an EFS lens that is, uh, you know, weather sealed with rubber gasket, it would be smaller, not as um, wide and your prior knuckle doesn't hit, but on the um, full frame, RF glass, um, I'm feeling the, the lock mechanism. Now the 15 to 20 or the 15 to 35 doesn't have that lock, so I probably won't be scratching on that, but on here I do feel it. Um, but for video, I probably will have this on a tripod or on a gimbal, and so I probably won't be hand holding this a whole lot anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it feels good. Um, it'll be interesting to test this out. Uh, I have high hopes for it, and if not, there's a 30-day return policy. So we will see. Uh, if there's things you want me to test out specifically, please leave comments below. Um, in theory, in my mind, this is a great option to go with an R5 or an R6. No overheating, good for video. Uh, for photos, it's gonna give you a little extra reach um, than you would get with the um, 24 to 70 or the 15 to 35. What I wanna do, and if you're thinking this, I'm gonna do it. Um, 
the R6, I'm gonna put on the 24 to 70 on that for testing for my next video. And I am gonna do the 15 to 35 on the R7. So they're essentially the same. They'll both look like a 24 millimeter. Um, so one will be a 24 millimeter. At 15 with a 1.6, it will be cropped in to look like a 24 millimeter. And so I kind of want to do a blind study test, not tell you which one it is, and maybe you'll guess right away. And just what do you think? Is the oversampling of the R7 going to be sharper, nicer at that focal length um, at 15, which looks like 24, compared to the R6 at 24? Um, so both are going to be L glass and very comparable. So I'd be curious. Anyways, uh, if you haven't already, for the next video, subscribe to this channel so you can stay tuned for some more testing on this. So, Jared Hoyman with VisibleTour.com and like this if you haven't already. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye.